those who live alone. When good news comes, wonder why, though they have been waiting and waiting for the kettle to work itself into a fury, releasing celebratory plumes of steam into the cool air, though they have been watching and watching, and the boil is so lancingly slow, why then does the actual moment lack all luster? The mind encompasses the message and signals this is now a time of happiness. Neurons do their work, synapses join or snap to attention, whatever they do. All parts of the body acknowledge receipt. There is even a certain amount of action, calls to those who will be pleased from those whose voices are feathery with congratulation. The kettle whistles on in an explosion of vapors, which should make the one who lives alone faint with joy. Instead, the air fills with damp, foreshadowing twinges of loss and other infirmity, so at home it settles down as if to stay. In pleading litanies of inattention, the lacks crease themselves more and more sharply into edges until they form a paper fan which lies beside the blue cup full of amber tea. Blue cup on green table with white fan. And the one who lives alone, admiring the fan, the style of its making, the knife edge of its folds, the precision of its dilemmas, snaps it open and shut, open and shut, looking away from the door, the blue door, looking away, no longer willing to invite the actual.